Hello, in this video I'll try my new 40 watt laser model from Neji. Start with unboxing, then make a quick review and for the end make a few tests. I got quite big box for a laser model, but there are a lot of stuff beside of model. Neji packed their product very well, and even that model isn't the exception. There are a lot of protective sponge into box and every component got its own drawer into sponge, and then additionally packed into bags with moisture absorbers in it. Ok, what we got into package? There are 12 volt 4 amp power supply this time. Red protective glasses. 1 meter long 4 wire cable for the laser model. Offline controller board for the laser. Euro AC adapter, tools, clamps for mounting the laser. And of course additional protected laser model. Basically NJ models got few and three treat from behind for mounting, but 30 and 40 watt version need clamp for mounting, which also allow us to set laser height. Clamps is completely made out of aluminium, between boots part come to springs so the clamp always stay opened until we block them with a single screw, so mounting and set the height of laser is really simple. First of all I compare them with 30 watt model I got from NJ Max. We can see that the model is almost identical on first view, with one major difference. There is no hole in the window for set of focus and the lens is a bit different. That's because 40 watt model is the only from NJ which had fixed focus. That means that we can't set focus by turning the lens but only with set height of entire model. Another interesting thing is that 40 watt model is 10 gram larger than 30 watt. But I like to see more, so I disassemble both model to see what's inside. Housing looks same, and even the driver look very similar, with just a bit different elements. So the major difference is the laser itself. I said 40 watt got fixed focus, but we still can unscrew the lens. Before I do that, I remember the position. In my case, it was three quarter of turn unscrewed from fully tight. When I remove the lens, I instantly see the major difference. Yep, there are two laser dies inside, which beams are joined with some kind of glass, mirror, prisma or whatever. I don't know what is it, but I know it must be glued very precision and clean, so I won't touch it. If we check the aluminium block, we can see that one diode is from the side and other from the top, like on other models with single diode. We can also see the covers on the block, which is covered after the glass is precisely glued to its position, but I won't dig deeper. Now I'll try to power the laser with testing board, so let's plug the cable and power supply. After plug the power supply we're in off mode, then with switch button enter into test mode, so we can set the power of laser from 0.01 to 100%. With pushing the button we can check the temperature anytime. And if we push switch button again we come into TTL mode, so we can control the laser with TTL mode if we need for some DIY project. Laser instantly shown its power. I only play for a few seconds with control board, of course with glasses on, and it already leave burning trace on wood, which is about 40 to 50 centimeters away from the laser. Here I notice another awesome property of 40 watt model. You can see that the laser beam is totally squared also on 40 cm distance. If I plug 30 or 20 watt laser model you can see that their lens can't focus the beam as good. So they come to power losses if we spread the light around and stick it to single point. Here we got the X-axis from Neji Max, which already got installed clamp for 30 or 40 watt model. But I want to make tests on Neji 2, because it's more handy. I got older Neji 2 with 20 watt model, so it's without clamp, but I got them with the model, so there shouldn't be a problem. But I was wrong, clamp wasn't fit on Neji 2. I got this engraver before 30 and 40 watt model exist, so I believe they fixed that on newer model of Neji 2. I could just drill a few holes into the X carriage for screw the clamp, but need to disassemble the laser, so I find easier solution. I designed and make a 3D printed spacer which come between the carriage and clamp. Of course it wasn't so fast. 
First space that I make in center, so it wasn't all of the carriage to push X limit switch. Second one worked, but only hold the model for a few millimeter, because clamp was too high. After a few attempts I finally make a space to which work nice and allow us to mount the clamp in two heights on existing holes into carriage. If you need STL for that part, check below for the link. I still got some working area loss in the corner, which can be simply solved by cut a piece of front leg. It won't affect on stability, but I leave it for now. Now it's time to set focus. Because this model got fixed focus, setting is even easier than turning the lens every time. I use a piece of hardwood, which doesn't absorb light and set focus until I get smallest possible dot. Using glasses or green focus piece allow us to see small dot without reflection of light. You can make a few tests and when the focus is perfectly set, just measure the height of laser from the surface and that's the focus distance. Doesn't matter how thick material you want to engrave or cut. So I make an easy gadget for setting the focus, in my case is a bit more than 17mm. Now just put that piece under the model every time I use different material and tie the model to its position. And got perfect focus in a second. After the focus was set it, I tried to make some engraves. Here you can see engraving on MDF material, with quite low power and burning time and the result is quite nice. But even better is in deep engraving, lies are nicely and evenly engraved, because there's enough power to burn also hardwood. Even if that laser is suitable for cutting, I got some amazing result, much better than with 20 or 30 watt. I think it's all about the better lens, which mean better focus. Then I tried to engrave anodized aluminium, which is sold as aluminium sheet for laser engraving, but I think it's meant for fiber laser, because 30 watt model doesn't even touch them, but 40 watt make nice engrave in single pass. Of course on homemade anodizing result is much better, because anodized surface isn't that tough. Someone asked me if that lasers work on stone, so I get out and grab first flat stone I find, but laser just leaves some traces on the surface but it may work on the right type of stone. Lot of people asking me about air assist, so let's make them. Point of air assist is to clean the cutting line. Compressed air blow the dust out of cutting lines so that the laser transfer energy to material you want to cut and stick into black dust. We improve capacity of cutting with air assist to about 3 to 4 times, and also cutted lines are more evenly, perpendicular, clean and burned dust doesn't cause fire that fast. I designed a simple 3D printed holder, check below for the link if you need. Then I use medical needle with outer diameter 1.3mm and tubes from oxygen mask with just right diameter of tube for the needle. First of all I grind a sharp end of needle to avoid injuries. Then with just a bit of heat pull off the plastic part and clean excessive glue. Then insert needle into tube and fix it with hot glue, so we seal the joint, because that mask tube isn't round inside. Now just push the needle into holder I printed and set a perfect angle. We can set angle on the holder and I bent also needle a bit. Point is to get needle closer and perpendicular as possible to a laser dot, so it blow the dust better out of cutted line. The other end of tube just connect to compressed air. I use about 1 to 1.5 bar of pressure. Flow isn't that big to tiny needle, so airbrush compressor or refrigerator compressor will work just fine. I use basic 25 liter compressor, so it runs just here and there. Beside air assist there's another trick which improve cutting capacity and cutting quality. I try to cut 3mm MDF here, but you can see a lot of burnt edges on the button. If we cut some thick material then can be very burnt touch which can also start fire. That's because air assist have no place to blow the dust, so it blow between cutted material and base plate. 
but if you use some mesh, I use about 1 mm thick and put it under cutted material, we make air pocket between the cutted material and base plate. So the air assist got free way to blow the dust through the cutted material and we got clean cutted line without burning catch, also on button. Ok, let's try to make some cuts now. You already seen that it can cut 3mm MDF in a single pass. Now try with 5mm poplar plywood. 5mm per second, 100% laser power, 2 passes. Almost, but with 4mm per second and 2 passes it worked nicely. Then I got here 10mm balsa. Laser cut them in a single pass with 5mm per second. But butt match is a bit burnt. I may get better result with lower power and more passes. 4.5mm spruce wood. I need to lower down the speed just a bit more to cut in a single pass. But with two passes it cut really nice with 5mm per second, which is my basic settings for cutting. If I use different speed, I'll tell you. 5.5mm ash wood. Go in three passes. Eight point six millimeter cherry wood cut in five passes. Ten millimeter linden wood cut in only four passes. Fifteen millimeter spruce wood cut in seven passes but need one more pass to cut all the fibers at the bottom. Nineteen mm hard oak wood. I tried to cut with ten passes, hundred percent laser power, five mm per second but it didn't cut more than 9 mm. 12 mm chipboard, going 10 passes cut about 10 mm deep. And finally the cutting limit, 19.5 mm spruce wood, going 10 to 12 passes and it cut through, but the shape was a bit deformed to the button. That's the bent on wood fiber which is harder than the rest of wood, so it shifts the cutting line a bit. I got lot of questions if that laser can cut acrylic, so I got few testing pieces to make a try. I try few different techniques, like paint the surface, stick different types of tapes on surface and so on. Black painted tape worked the best and it cuts solid colors, but without tape only cut black ones successfully. All other colors, especially transparent ones, transfer too much light over the material and stick only into cutting line. There may be some tricks to cut, but I wasn't successful. Rubber is quite tough to cut. I try on 3mm but didn't make perfect cut through. So I think 2mm is the limit, but make good and grave if you plan to make your own stamps. Of course, you can cut and engrave also soft material like leather, but with very low power. Later I mount the laser also on AJ box to cut some wood passes. First one out of 5mm popular plywood with settings 10mm per second 40% laser power single pass for engraving and 5mm per second speed 100% laser power 3 passes for cutting. By the way, for puzzle files just ask Google for DXF file for laser cutting and you'll get a bunch of results.
Then I try to make puzzle out of 3mm MDF. I use same settings, only set it to 4 passes cutting glare this time, because I use some other more tough MDF, and puzzle like that need to be 100% cut it through, otherwise we'll broke tiny parts while removing uncutted parts. That's pretty much it about Neji 40 watt laser model. I'm really impressed about it and can easily say it's the best Neji model. It got great cutting capacity, not only because of its power but also because of its awesome focus, which enables not only cutting but also engraving better than 20 or 30 watt model. But I think 2.5 or 3.5 watt model are still better for grayscale wood engraving. We'll see that in some next videos where I make comparison of Neji models from 2.5 to 40 watt version. I got lot of comments about the power of that models. It's sold as 40 watt model, but it's electrical power. Actual optical power is 15 watt. Before you're asking me how I can cut so thick material, I can only say to you, take time to set focus, as good as you can. Focus is really important if you want to cut thick materials, and also position of air assist is quite important, so it blow the cutting line as good as possible. For more info, price and order, check for the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.